All right, we have acquired property plant and equipment, and we are now looking at how do we compute the amount of the depreciation expense each year in that adjusting journal entry, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. So how much did we use? And this is an overview of the different depreciation methods that you could adopt. Depreciation, it's a method of cost allocation. It is used to allocate the cost of that property, plant, and equipment over the years that it benefits. In other words, it stems from the matching principle of trying to match the costs associated with the revenues it generates. And because you acquire property, plant, and equipment and use it to produce goods and services, the cost of that property, plant, and equipment needs to be spread out over its useful life or usefulness. Notice that depreciation will decrease the carrying value or the book value of the asset, but it is not a valuation technique. In other words, it has nothing to do with the fair market value or the market value of what the piece of equipment would bring if you were trying to sell it. So it's just a way, it's a mechanic of how to take that cost and spread it out over the useful life. So um, here's some terms we've been throwing around. Um, depreciation expense, we know is an expense. It shows up on the income statement every year versus accumulated depreciation is a contract property, plant, and equipment, or non-current asset account. It shows up on the balance sheet. And uh, we also know that we do not depreciate land. We know that carrying value is the same thing as book value, is the same thing as the cost of the property, plant, and equipment, less its accumulated depreciation. We've also talked about the depreciable base. And the depreciable base is the cost of the asset minus its salvage or residual value, meaning how much you think you're going to be able to dispose of that property, plant, and equipment at the end of its useful life. In other words, its disposal value uh, at the end. And this is something we estimate at the beginning. Uh, we only depreciate to the depreciable base. And the three methods that we will be using um, that you need to know that are on your homework are straight line, which says you take uh, the cost of the asset minus its salvage value and divide it by the years of its usefulness. So if I was to graph that, it's a straight line. It's the same amount of depreciation every single year. Uh, alternatively, instead of looking at the useful life in terms of years, I could look at it in terms of units or activities. So for example, I could, um, for a car or a truck, look at um, the depreciation cost per mile and then multiply it by the number of miles uh, driven that year to figure out how much I should depreciate the car this year based upon a useful life of so many miles of usefulness rather than so many years of usefulness. And that's called units of production or activity uh, basis for depreciation. And we'll do some of those. And as you can see, if I graph it out, it will be erratic because it's driven by the activity that was used that year, the number of miles driven, those types of things. The third method is an accelerated depreciation method, meaning we take a lot of depreciation in the early years of an asset's life and not as much in the later years. Um, so if you think about when you buy a new car and you drive it off the lot, it immediately depreciates a whole lot because it's no longer a new car. Um, it follows that thought process for these accelerated methods. And this one's called double declining balance, uh, fondly known as DDB, or 200% declining balance. So those are the three methods that we will be looking at. So 
Uh, we know about useful life. We know about salvage value. Those are the two things you need to know as well as the cost of the asset uh, that you will depreciate. So once you know the cost, the useful life, and the salvage or residual value, I can compute the depreciation for the debt entry. We've talked about the three methods we're going to be looking at, the units of production or the activity method, the straight line method, the double declining balance method. There are some other accelerated methods called 150% declining balance, some of the year's digits, and the methods that are used for income tax purposes, which are called makers or modified accelerated cost recovery systems. Uh, under IFRS, depreciation accounting is very similar to U.S. GAAP. I should make a point here to say that how I compute depreciation for tax purposes is different, generally, than how I compute depreciation for financial statement purposes. So if I'm looking at my theory, I would say I want to use straight line depreciation for financial statement purposes to minimize the depreciation expense and to maximize my net income each year. Whereas for income tax purposes, there's a whole different set of rules, which are known as makers. Um, and those generally, you're taking accelerated depreciation um, so that if I take a big ex depreciation expense, my taxable income is less and I pay less taxes. It is very common for when you're doing depreciation that you keep a side um, system because there's not one, two, there's probably three different methods of doing depreciation just for tax purposes and then financial purposes. So you need a pretty agile system that can take the cost, the useful life, and the salvage value and slice it and dice it many different ways depending upon what report you're generating.